Ready for an episode filled with fun and excitement? Here's a blink and you'll miss it sneak preview. Ready for the details? Hey there, my name is Salandrak, and welcome to another episode of my Wagstaff Reign of Giants playthrough series. In the last episode, we finished out our second fall and got ready to head back to the caves. Will we find any ancient treasures, and will there be any one-eyed dangers in our future as we progress through winter? Let's find out! It's currently day 93 and the first day of winter in our second year. At the end of last episode, I had gotten all packed up to return back to the caves, but realized after the episode ended that there were a few more things I wanted to take with me, including a sewing kit and a bird for my birdcage. So right away I gather materials to make the sewing kit, and then make a bird trap and plop it on the ground, placing a seed in it for bait. A half minute later, I've captured a snowbird, and then, since my sanity is a bit low, I decide to make a round of taffy. While it cooks, I go ahead and gather all the honey from the bee boxes, spawning pengals in the process. Bees are inactive during winter, so you can harvest all the boxes safely, which is nice. Taffy gets eaten, boosting my brain at a small cost to health, and then I run up to gather some ice from those pengals that just spawned. I go ahead and pre-craft another alchemy engine as I still need to make a lantern but don't have any light bulbs at the moment, so I'll do that down in the caves. A few inventory items get stored and sorted, then I warm up nice and toasty by the fire and wait for morning to arrive before heading out to the sinkhole. Even though it's early winter, it's cold enough to freeze at night, but during the day it gets above zero, so I just wear my Krampus sack, using my thermal stone to keep warm. A quick jog up the road, I pause to grab a seed to feed my bird, and then hop into the sinkhole. I found the entrance to the ruins really fast in this cave, but want to do a bit more exploring of the cave level before heading to the ruins. In particular, I want to find some rock lobsters, which I'll befriend and take down with me to help out with the Ancient Guardian. Adjacent to the blue biome is a rocky area that looks promising, and yep, a little ways up, I find more than enough of the walking rocky crustaceans. I feed four of the full-sized ones three flint each, which will make them follow me for just over a day, and then I head towards the ruined sinkhole, but get attacked by a terror beak that spawned from a shadow fissure. My dark sword takes it down fast, then straight to the sinkhole, and down I go. Although the rock lobsters were a ways behind me in the cave, since they were befriended, they immediately appear next to me in the ruins. And so long as they aren't befriended when I leave, they'll stay down here indefinitely, making a nice backup defense against worms and whatnot. I head over to the camp area, light a fire, ditch the infroggles, then place my bird cage and cage my bird. Alchemy engine goes down, and I prototype a lantern. I notice the ground shaking, and then get struck by lightning? Across the chasm, there must be an active rook that smashed into a pseudoscience station. I've never had that happen from so far away before. I put on my infroggles, and yep, there's a rook. Maybe he was fighting with some dangling depth dwellers? Next, I place a pre-crafted storage chest, so I can store some of the items that I don't need to constantly be carrying with me. Rock lobsters get fed a few more flint, but just as I'm about to head out, I get an earthquake. Infroggles go on, then I head out to explore the labyrinth. This is a maze-like area of the ruins, and features webs on the ground that, if walked upon, cause white spiders to drop down from the ceiling. Stat-wise, these things are a lot like spider warriors, and they go down fast to either my dark sword or the rock lobsters. I brush on the corner of what appears to be a sacred biome, which has a lot of clockworks, so I put on my log suit to help the lobsters take them out. I look around a little bit, but then decide to head back into the labyrinth where my real target is hiding somewhere. The labyrinth also has a number of treasure chests, but I'm not here looking for loot quite yet. Perhaps in a later trip, likely in fall, when I can more easily bring my Krampus sack without any weather-related restrictions. The nightmare lights are on though, meaning I'm in either the warning or nightmare phase of the cycle, which will cause shadow creatures to spawn from the lights and statues. And yep, a cycle change sound goes off, lights get brighter, and now I'm in the dangerous nightmare phase of the nightmare cycle. I quickly get spotted by some terror beaks, and before I can kill the first one, get attacked by a second, mess up the timing, and get hit twice without any armor almost killing me. Uh-oh, danger! At this point, I throw on my armor and run around to avoid them. I don't dare start fighting and take another hit, especially in these cramped labyrinth hallways. I make it back to where the clockworks were slain, which gives me more space to run around in, and finally get an opening and kill off the one I had weakened earlier. But now there's a crawling horror. Did I mention that the nightmare phase can be dangerous? 
The second terror beat goes down as a second crawling horror arrives, then I run off to the side and quickly grab my jerky from Chester for some healing. Yay, now death is slightly less imminent. One crawling horror goes down, followed shortly afterwards by the second one. I then decide to take a break, make a fire to warm back up, and wait for the nightmare cycle to end while gathering the nightmare fuel. A sound alert and change of lighting indicates the arrival of the dawn phase, and I use the time to feed my lobsters until the light changes again and I'm back in the calm phase. This will last for around 5 minutes or so. When froggles go back on, then it's back into the labyrinth. Another earthquake arrives just as I'm getting into new territory. It's really hard to see the shadows of falling rock with the infroggles on, but I somehow managed to not get hit this time. Although the webbing seems to cover the full hallway just as on the surface, you can actually avoid angering the spiders if you stay on the edges. Though Chester and the rock lobsters aren't so clever. Apparently the path I was on looped around and the lobsters took a shortcut to get back to me. Then up ahead, a little further, I see my goal, a big pillar with a dirt area in the middle, the lair of the ancient guardian boss. After waiting a bit for the lobsters to catch up, I spot my prey on the corner of my screen, then back off to put Chester in a safer location. Looks like a couple of Depth's worms were also up there, and one heads over to my little nook. The lobsters take that one out, while the ancient guardian actually takes out the other one. Then I run over to get the attention of the Guardian, which also sicks my lobsters on him. The Rock Lobsters are really tanky and do decent damage, which is good because the Guardian's charge hits like a truck. 100 damage if you aren't wearing armor. I push one lobster to get him around the pillar, then they all move into the lair. Looks like one of the lobsters actually died already, and I failed to notice that my Dark Sword was almost broken. So I run back to Chester while another lobster crumbles to rock, grab care package number three that has living logs, and make myself a new dark sword. All the while not noticing that the lobsters had already killed the guardian. Yeah, that was really sloppy, but hey, the guardian's dead. I go grab the guardian's horn and drop it in the ornate chest, which has a fair amount of thulacite in it. Meanwhile, the remaining rock lobster is over there consuming his dead friends, and by the time I get back to where Chester is, He's also eaten all of the rocks and gold that were in my care package. Whoops, so much for the rest of my goggle making materials. I grab Chester's eye bone just as the warning phase begins, then spend some time gathering up the loot as best I can. While still organizing, the nightmare phase begins, and I go ahead and eat a bacon and eggs and finish off my jerky for some healing and sanity gain. Then I make an extra backup dark sword, and then toss some stuff into a bundling wrap to free up some inventory space. But apparently there is a nightmare light pretty close by and a terror beak rushes at me. Before I can kill it, three crawling horrors and another terror beak jump in, which is too many to handle, so I start to run away just as I also start to get cold. While running around and trying to place a campfire without getting hit, I hear the sound of the dawn phase and finally get a fire started just after I start taking damage from the cold. And moments later, calm phase has returned and I pick up the free nightmare fuel on the ground. I'm a bit too beat up to explore the sacred biome though, so after warming me and my thermal stone up, head back to my cave camp. Once there, I cook up some pierogi to heal, and soon it's the nightmare phase again. I decide to go run around exploring for the rest of the phase, grabbing a bunch of blue mushrooms along the way while getting chased by terror beaks. Calm phase returns again, which means more nightmare fuel too. Once I've finished mapping out the wilds, I head back to camp, cook blue caps to get my sanity topped off, and I'm pretty much in good shape again. I was a bit low on logs, so I bust open the supplies care package, make some new log suits, then bundle some of the materials back up and return the package back to Chester. Then it's off towards the sacred biome to see what I can find. I leave Chester behind this time. That biome can be pretty dangerous and I don't want him to get killed or lure any rooks around behind him. Oh hey, the lobsters made a baby. I guess they're having a honeymoon down here. I barely get into the sacred biome when the lights turn on for the warning phase. There are also a lot of statues in this area that can have special colored gems needed to craft the best items in the game at the pseudoscience stations, but I'll come back to do that another time. I find a sleeping clockwork rook close to a fully functional pseudoscience station. This can be bad because the rook's charge can break the station, which is what happened earlier when I got struck by lightning while standing in camp. So in order to prevent that from happening, taking out the rooks away from the station is a top priority. I get the first one down, but that attracted a friend that I move on to next. The nightmare phase goes into full swing though, and I don't want to be fighting clockworks while also dealing with shadow monsters, 
so I run off to explore the edges of the biome, seeing many more clockworks asleep in the interior. Soon I've got the area outlined, but the nightmare is still active, so I start mapping out the interior, keeping my distance from the clockworks. Eventually I've got quite the horde of shadow creatures following me, but just after dawn phase there's only a terror beacon crawling horror. I guess the rest got bored and wandered off? Calm arrives and I make a fire to warm up again, then run over to the ornate chest from the Ancient Guardian where I had left all of the Thulesite. I had thought that the sacred biome would have connected over to that area, but apparently not. I grab the Thulesite, then head back to the other area, rewarming by the fire that is still burning. On my way to the full pseudoscience station, I take out another rook, and then head over to the full station I had found earlier. It's been a while since I've been to one of these, and I hadn't looked up the recipes ahead of time to remind myself of what all is needed, but a quick browse of the recipes helps me remember that in addition to the green, yellow, and orange gems from statues, I'll also need living logs and nightmare fuel. <laughs> Dope, I left all my living logs at camp, but at least there's plenty of nightmare fuel in the area which I run around to gather up, and then proceed to make a thulicide suit. This thing has four times the durability of a log suit and reduces damage by 90% compared to the log suit's 80. And it also boosts your sanity as much as a top hat or dapper vest. I decide to go ahead and mine a few statues but only get a couple of purple gems, and by then the warning phase starts again and I decide that's probably enough for this expedition. Besides, my infroggles are getting low anyways. I run back to camp with the purple gems on my cursor, then I go ahead and open the supplies package again to make another chest for additional storage down here. After sorting the storage a bit, it's a quick trip back to the surface where it's just a little after morning. So despite the amount of time I spent down there, I didn't come home with much in the way of treasures. Wagstaff's reliance on goggles really limits his ability to carry much stuff around as he's basically stuck wearing weather-related chest gear in every season except fall. But since I've already killed Berger, I expect that next fall will be spent entirely spelunking. And besides, I've got to spend a decent amount of time on the surface for the rest of this season just in case a Deerclop stops by for a visit. The rest of the day is spent doing chores around base and just before morning I get the warning sounds of a hound attack. I'm at day 101 now so the attacks are in their final stage of nastiness, but my somewhat small tooth trap area is more than sufficient to help down the doggies though I do get popsicled by the last one. I next decide to run a bunch of eggs and stale jerky to the Pig King. Having lost my goggle making gold to the rock lobsters, I'm a bit short on nuggets and need to restock. Back at base I make some new and froggles and spend the rest of the night and some of the next day gathering grass in the savannah. I'm also a bit low on spider silk, so I decide to take down a level 3 nest that's down here. To spare the durability of my tentacle spike, I just use my walking stick to break the nest. It takes longer, but as it has infinite durability, it gives the nest enough time to turn into a queen. Whoops. Well, guess I'm taking down a queen now. Oh hey, looks like a local pig has joined the fight too. Thanks, buddy. Queen goes down, me and the pig clean up the rest of the spiders, and then I reward him by letting him eat his heart's content of monster meat. And then of course slay him when he turns into a were pig. Don't judge, I needed more pig skins. A little after night arrives, I'm getting cold and need a fire, and notice a pile of suspicious dirt nearby, so after warming up, decide to see what it leads to. The other day in a live stream, it was suggested that I find a winter koalifant to keep my pet Wumbo company. The target is found just before dawn, but it isn't a koalifant. I've got my first Varg of the playthrough, but I'll come back to deal with her later. Back at base, I leave the spider hat as an offering for the sleeping lure plant. I've got more than these than I'll ever use, so they're just taking up space at this point. A new sewing kit gets made to patch up my hibernation vest, and then I run into the forest above base to get more spider silk. Oh goody, more spider queens! Ah well. It takes a few minutes for me to clear out all the little spiders, but before I can get to the queen, she has already planted herself while the other spider nest pops up into a queen. At one point I get a pretty good horde of spiders after me and they go down fast enough but I have to back off afterwards to warm up a bit. I didn't bring my thermal stone though so instead of fighting in the dark with no armor I head down to the thumper to harvest the trees. Morning of day 105 arrives and I head back to the forest to take out the spider queen. This time getting joined by a pair of local pigs. But before I can reward them for their loyal service I hear a sound. I've got a deer clops incoming. I quickly warp back to base and frantically sort through my inventory to get what I'll need to slay the giant. 
I can tell I won't have time to get out of base before it spawns though, and even if I did, would risk it spawning between me and base and then proceed to wreck my structures. So I stay put and soon enough the ground is shaking, Deerclops has arrived. She manages to take out my telepad before I spot her location, but then I smack her a few times with my walking stick to make her mad, then lure her off a short ways and drop a campfire. Between attacks I put two more logs in to stoke up the fire, then I put on my log suit and visor, equip my dark sword, and take up my fighting position on top of the campfire. My armor is a bit on the low side for tanking Deerclops, but I've got a backup Thulacite armor, and since I'm using a dark sword, the fight will be over fast. I keep on whacking away, never getting frozen because of the campfire, and before long, the giant is slain, and I've got myself a Deerclops eyeball, which, along with the horn of the Ancient Guardian, will allow me to make a Houndius Shootius the next time I head down to the Ancient Ruins. The fight left me crazy enough that a crawling horror followed me back to base, so I dispatch it with my dark sword. I then make a full round of Taffy to help boost my sanity, reconstructing my telepad while they cook. Taffy gets my brain boosted up a ways, and then while hanging the deer clops meat to dry, I get another hound attack which arrives during the full moon. Lots of blue hounds this time, which will help me expand the tooth traps, which I do the next day, adding another six traps. Eventually, I want to have a full ring of traps, which will give me plenty of maneuverability while killing off the hounds quite efficiently. More spider hats get offered to the lure plant, and then I decide to go on a mining trip to bolster my rock and niter supplies over in the rocky land. Winter is almost over, but it's still hovering around just cold enough to freeze you, so I burn a tree to warm up, then run back to base grabbing more grass along the way. Oh hey, it looks like the walruses didn't do so well against the frogs from last spring's frog rain. Deerclops jerky finishes up just as I'm getting back into base, and I spend the night getting organized for spring. Raincoat goes into my inventory, and hibernation vest gets patched up for storage. I spend most of the night working in the kitchen, and then just after morning arrives, I head out to assemble my forces to take down the Varg. I grab three pigs from the nearby forest and then head down to the savannah, careful to lead my troops around my tooth traps. Soon the beast is found and I lead my warriors into glorious combat. Three hounds join the fight right away, which aggro on Wagstaff while the pigs pummel the Varg. My visor breaks, so I switch to the log suit, but then one of the pigs lands the killing blow, slaying the beast. And yes, I then reward my troops with the monster meat because I'm a bad person and I really just want more pigskin. Food gets stored at base, then I go up to check on Wumbo. Sorry I wasn't able to find you a friend, maybe next winter. And with that, I decide to call it a day. I gotta admit, that was a pretty eventful winter. Much exploration of the ancient ruins, took out the ancient guardian, found a full pseudoscience station, down some spider queens, bagged my third of the four seasonal giants, and vanquished my first Varg of the playthrough. If you enjoyed all that, please be sure to smash that like button, feel free to subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll see you in the next one. Cheers!